Let's now explore the conformations of cycloalkanes in more detail, focusing on the origins of strains and how the molecules adjust their shape to alleviate some of these strains. Cyclopropane is the smallest cycloalkane, and it's extremely rigid since all three carbons are tied together. As a consequence of its rigidity, it has only one low-energy conformer, and it's the completely planar, completely eclipsing structure that you'd expect from the flat Lewis structure drawing. Cyclopropane looks like it suffers from horrible angle strain because of its apparent bond angles of 60 degrees. But in actuality, the situation isn't quite as bad as it looks. This is a natural bonding orbital for the CC sigma bond of cyclopropane. And one thing we can notice is that if we focus on the little nubs of the hybrids involved in this bond, they're not actually perfectly coaxial. In other words, they're not perfectly collinear. They collide at an angle, which we're not really used to seeing in sigma bonds. Typically, right, sigma bonds involve the perfect coaxial overlap of orbitals. Here, the orbitals are overlapping at an angle. This provides some energetic advantage since each, since each carbon doesn't really need to achieve a bond angle of 60 degrees. In this particular case, each deviation is about 19 degrees, meaning that the actual angle between hybrids at the carbons of cyclopropane is not as bad as 60 degrees. It's really the 60 degrees plus 19 degrees times 2, which is 98 degrees. Much closer to the sp3 ideal than we would expect from the Lewis structure of cyclopropane alone. Yet another testament to the value of looking at localized molecular orbitals to gain some deeper insights into structure here. It's not as simple as 60 degrees since the angle between the hybrids is not 60 degrees but is actually wider. The carbon-hydrogen bonds in cyclopropane are necessarily eclipsed and we can see this by aligning the cyclopropane molecule so that we're looking down one of the carbon-carbon bonds in a Newman projection type view. You can see here that the front CH bonds are completely eclipsing the CH bonds in the back in this viewpoint. Because these two carbons are acting like eclipsed ethane, as are all the other pairs of adjacent carbons in this molecule, the molecule exhibits large torsional strain relative to propane where, of course, all of the CH bonds are staggered. These two effects, the severe angle strain and the large torsional strain, explain the instability of cyclopropane relative to propane. Nonetheless, cyclopropane is more stable than you might at first believe. It's a stable gas that can be isolated and handled for a long period of time without issue. Cyclobutane is somewhat more flexible than cyclopropane, and so to avoid the perfect eclipsing of CH bonds that would accompany a planar structure, the cyclobutane ring puckers slightly. Puckering involves moving one of the carbons out of the plane formed by the other three, and this causes a rotation of the CH bonds that alleviates some torsional strain. This window shows the puckered structure of cyclobutane, and this viewpoint nicely shows how there's a bit of a bend in the center of the molecule. This is what's meant by puckering. You'll also hear this described as a butterfly-type structure since the two sides of the molecule have the appearance of wings. If we look down one of the carbon-carbon bonds, we see that the two sets of CH bonds on the front and back carbons are not perfectly eclipsing. Rotation has led to the alleviation of some angle strain, although it's not completely gone. We've managed to achieve a dihedral angle that is certainly not zero now that the ring has managed to pucker somewhat. In this particular quantum mechanically optimized structure, this dihedral angle is about 26 degrees. That's still far from the 60 degree ideal, so cyclobutane has a considerable amount of torsional strain left in it. However, it's much better than cyclopropane where this angle is necessarily zero degrees. Bond bending is not as much of a problem in cyclobutane as it is in cyclopropane. And looking at one of the CC sigma bonding orbitals in cyclobutane makes this apparent. If we look at, for example, the little nubs again, we can see that they're darn near coaxial. There's a little bit of deviation, but not much. In cyclobutane, this angle of deviation from the line connecting the nuclei is only about 9 degrees per hybrid. And notice where this puts us, using the idea from cyclopropane that we take the apparent bond angle and add twice this deviation of each hybrid at the carbon. The true angle between the hybrids in a molecule of cyclobutane is 108 degrees, and that's darn close to the sp3 ideal. If we look at the compositions of the hybrids as determined by an NBO calculation, we only get further evidence. The hybrids in the CC bonds are essentially perfectly sp3, 
as indicated by the results of this calculation. 24.88% S and 74.96% P to construct these hybrids. Flat cyclopentane is an interesting case to consider because based on the geometry of a perfect pentagon, the angle here for flat cyclopentane would be 108 degrees, which is darn near the sp3 ideal, indicating that the molecule would have very little, little angle strain. However, as we've seen already, this molecule would suffer from severe torsional strain due to eclipsing of hydrogens at adjacent carbon atoms. That torsional strain is enough of a destabilizing factor for the flat structure as to make it essentially out of reach completely for cyclopentane. It's just too unstable. The most stable conformer of cyclopentane involves some bending, as we saw for cyclobutane, and it's called the envelope. The envelope conformer consists of four essentially coplanar carbon atoms, with the fifth above or below the plane formed by those four carbon atoms. So here, I've highlighted the coplanar carbons in green, and the carbon highlighted blue is above the plane formed by these four. This conformer alleviates a lot of the torsional strain issues in the flat structure. The worst offenders for torsional strain are these two carbons on the opposite side of the point, which in this structure are these two over here, which appear to be almost completely eclipsed. If we look at the dihedral angle here, it's only about 5 degrees, which is still very close to eclipsed. However, things are looking much better for the other carbons. For example, if we focus on the carbon at the point, its dihedral with the CH bonds next door is getting close to the 60 degree ideal, 44.1 degrees in this case. And the other carbons along the sides of the envelope are looking decent here as well. The dihedral here is that negative 26 degrees, and that should look very familiar from the cyclobutane puckering case we just looked at. So the dihedral angles here are looking better from the perspective of torsional strain. That said, some torsional strain and some angle strain remain in this molecule, so it's not as stable as linear acyclic pentane. The five-membered ribosugars within ribonucleic and deoxyribonucleic acids, RNA and DNA, resemble cyclopentane with the change that one of the CH2s has been replaced with an oxygen atom. I wanted to return to the example we saw at the start of this series on cycloalkanes since it's very relevant to the cyclopentane conformations we just looked at. As it turns out, whether the ring is deoxyribose, as it is here with a hydroxyl group missing from this carbon, or ribose, where there is a hydroxy group at this carbon, influences how the ring puckers. DNA prefers to pucker on its south side, quote unquote, far from the carbon where connection to the nu nucleobase occurs. If we think of this carbon, for example, as the north side of the molecule, we see that puckering occurs here, far from that northernmost carbon, which is associated with south side puckering. Remarkably, simply replacing this hydrogen with an OH group, a hydroxyl group, leads to a completely different conformational preference in RNA. And that's what we're seeing in this second image. In ribonucleic acids, the ring pucker occurs very close to, in fact, essentially at that carbon where the nucleobase is connected. Notice that these four atoms are essentially coplanar, and the pucker is happening at the atom connected to the nucleobase, which once again is considered the north side of the sugar just by convention. So this is what's called a north side pucker. I don't know about you, but I find it remarkable that the simple replacement of a single atom, really, the single hydrogen for a hydroxyl group, leads to a completely different conformational preference for this five-membered ring. This is an extreme case, but it goes to show you the subtle effects that substituents can have on conformational preference. In the next video, we're going to focus on cyclohexane, which is perhaps the most interesting cycloalkane of all. We'll look at conformations of cyclohexane, how it interconverts between its two most stable conformations, and what happens when we start putting substituents on the cyclohexane ring.